What's going on, everybody? You know what time it is? It's October baseball. And this is going to be the first video of this month of October that I'll be talking about MLB postseason throwback Thursday. Today is the first day. And today I'm going to cover some games from 1991 through 1995. So buckle up because this one is going to be a good one. I want to start things off with the 1991 American League Championship Series between the Minnesota Twins and the Toronto Blue Jays, and I specifically picked Game 3 for this one. During this particular time, there was no division series, there were no wild card winners, so it were just League Championship Series and World Series. So in this particular game, you had Jimmy K and Jimmy Key starting for the Blue Jays and Scott Erickson starting for the Minnesota Twins. The most important part of, I mean, in my opinion, I feel like it's the best game of the series, but I feel like this one is the more critical one. Why? Because I believe it was in the fifth inning. Um, Toronto Blue Jays power hitting guy, Joe Carter. Um, as he was trying to make a play by the warning track, his right ankle um, collided with the warning track. So Joe Carter immediately um, injures, in the, injures himself in the play by trying to make a play. But what I respect about Joe Carter is that in, instead of he could have stayed down, thriving in pain, but he went to get the ball because he missed um, to catch the ball. He went to get the ball, threw it to the infield, and then that's when he um, collided. To, uh, that's when he fell to the floor, thriving in pain. And what's more inspiring about that is that he stayed in the game. Um, at this time, I feel like players back then, they were more tougher and through and, and played through pain. So Joe Carter stayed in the game, but his production um, dropped significantly. Um, in the next the following two games, he only got one hit, I believe it was. Why? Because of his, of his ankle injury. So his ankle injury changed everything for the Blue Jays in that series. Um, they went on to um, lose um, game three in extra innings, three to two, and Twins went on to take a two to one series lead in, in, the, in the series, but they went on to win the following two games, finishing off the Toronto Blue Jays in five games. But that would not be the end for the Blue Jays because they would go on to become world champions the following year and in 1993. And in 1993, Joe Carter will forever be remembered for hitting that game-winning home run against the Philadelphia Phillies to, um, to um, repeat as world champions. So um, I call the 91 um, championship series against the Twins as growing pains. I also can't forget that this Twins Blue Jays series is the first postseason series where both teams um, played indoors because both teams play in dome stadiums. So that's something that I also wanted to share with you guys in case you guys didn't know. Yes, game five between the Phillies and the Braves in the 1983 National League Championship Series. For me, this is my favorite game of the series. Um, it was played in Atlanta. You had Kurt Schilling versus Steve Avery, and the Braves have the best rotation in baseball. You had Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, um, John Smoltz, and Steve Avery, and the Phillies were up against. But on this particular game, it was Kurt Schilling who got the best out of Steve Avery. Kurt Schilling, who was 25 years old at the time, he completely shut down the Braves offense through eight and a half innings. But things would um, take a turn in the ninth inning um, when um, Philly's closer, Mitch Williams, a.k.a. Wild Thing, came into the ninth inning on a 3-0 lead trying to close out the game. But the Braves rallied and they scored three runs in the bottom of the ninth inning. However, anyone will think that momentum shifted in that moment, but in the top of the 10th inning, Lenny Dykstra hit a home run, which put the nail in the coffin to give the Phillies 
a 4-3 victory and take a 3-2 series lead in the series. And the Phillies went on to close out the Braves in Game 6. The series between the Mariners and the Yankees is the best series of the division series of that year. This was the first year that you had a wild card, both in the American League and National League. The Yankees were the American League wild card winners that year. And then you had the Mariners, Ken Griffey being Ken Griffey, Edgar Martinez, um, Jay Buhner, the list goes on and on. And the Yankees, you had Don Mattingly, who made the playoffs with the Yankees in his final season with the Yankees. You also had, mm, excuse me, you also have Paul O'Neill and Bernie Williams. But I specifically picked game two because Jim Lawrence, who's a guy that he's not really known for what he does in the regular season, is his postseason performance. He has come through time and time again. And in the 95 series against the Mariners was the start of everything. He hit a two-run homer against the Mariners in the bottom of the 12th inning to give the Yankees a 2-0 lead in the series. But as the series shift back to Seattle, Seattle won three straight. And of course it ended with um, a crazy finish with Edgar Martinez and the double to give the Mariners um, the victory in the series, closing out the Yankees. But it was a phenomenal series if you look back at it. And as for Jim Lawrence, that would be the beginning of his playoff heroics. He came through again the following year in, 96, in the 1996 World Series in Game 4 um, against Mark Wallers. And his three-run homer to tie the game in that World Series changed the whole momentum. And it was the start of a dynasty for the Yankees. He also um, hit some big home runs for the 1998 San Diego Padres in the National League Division Series and so on. So Jim Lawrence, um, when it came at the right time, he produced, which was October baseball. Last but not least, the 1995 series between the Red Sox and Cleveland Indians, game one particularly. And um, the Cleveland Indians, they won 100 games that year. I feel like that was the best team that I've ever seen that a Cleveland Indians team I ever had. Um, you can make the case for the 2016 team, although I will say the 2016, the 2016 team had a better rotation than 1995, but in terms of all around package, I'll take 1995 over 2016 Indians. And, um, and, um, Tony Pena, who was a veteran at the time, on a 3-0 pitch with two outs left in the bottom of the 13th inning. He hit a home run to give the Indians the victory. But before all of that happened, um, Albert Bell, who was the Indians power hitter and and probably the best hitter of their lineup, um, he tied the game with a home run in the 11th inning um, to keep the Indians there in the game. Um, and the Indians went on to sweep the Boston Red Sox in the 95 division series. However, that would be the first of many meetings they would face in the postseason. They faced each other again in 1998. The Indians um, beat the Red Sox in four games. In 1999, the Red Sox came down from a 0-2 deficit to um, beat the Indians in the division series. And especially will be remembered for Pedro Martinez, outstanding performance in game five. Um, they also faced each other in 2007, which the Indians had a 3-1 lead over the Red Sox, but they blew it. The Red Sox went on to win it all. And then in 2016, um, the Indians swept the Red Sox in the division series. Um, and another thing I would like to mention, because I feel like it it's completely forgotten, and it's about the 95 series between the Red Sox and, and, Red Sox and Indians. And that is that Luis Alaseo was one of the few players from the Red Sox lineup to perform well.
he hit 600 with a double and a home run. And that's something that I will have to bring it up because I feel like it's often forgotten. But Luis Alaseo, I want to give him props for having a terrific postseason um, performance for the Red Sox in the 95 series. That does it for this first day of MLB postseason throwback Thursday. Stay tuned for next Thursday because I'll be covering from 1996 through 2000.